in a new Rhino file in small objects inches template start in the top viewport with a circle center of the circle at the origin zero enter the first diameter is going to be four inches four enter spacebar to repeat the previous circle command center of our circle zero enter this diameter is going to be 3.7 enter now we're going to draw the top part of the ornament it doesn't have all the dimensions on the drawing so what we're going to do is go to our center rectangle starting at the center of the ornament enter it's going to have a width of 0.83 and then the height is going to be estimated at approximately looks like about 0.7 would work just fine gonna click and drag this straight up holding down shift to keep it nice and straight and orthographic looking at it now it does look a little tall in reference to my drawing I'm gonna grab these dots right here hold down shift and just drop it down right about there and if we want to get critical with the dimension it looks like we're at 0.52 so a half inch would be great the next thing we need to do is add the 0.13 radius fillet on the corners to round these two sharp corners on the top of the ornament that's done with this fillet curves tool right here left click select curves to fill it I'm going to click in this radius and type in 0.13 press enter and now I'm going to left click left click kind of on the both sides of the corner to add that repeat one more time to add that fillet radius we now need the center hole for the ornament I'm going to go with a circle and then I'm using the midpoint snap so in my O snap feature I have the midpoint snap activated and I also have smart track to help me keep in line I'm gonna hover at the midpoint and then slowly go down and basically eyeball it right in the middle and that's going to be a diameter of 0.13 enter I'm gonna trim these overlapping line segments trim tool selecting everything notice I went from right to left with a selection window by holding the mouse down and it gets everything that the dashed box is either in outside of or intersects with if you go left to right just what fits inside the box so there's a little trick right there for you once again trim and I want this to disappear and this just disappear enter when done and also remember good habit once you trim stuff we need to control a select everything and join it now we're going to draw the inside geometry of the snowflake going to start with a center rectangle center of our ornament it's going to be a width of 0.2 enter and then the height basically just needs to come up and intersect with the rest of the ornament. Now we're going to draw the little branches off to the side. Those branches do not have a critical dimension, so you can kind of estimate or do a little freestyling if you'd like. Going to do another center rectangle, starting at the center. Once again, it's going to be, probably looks like it's about the same width, so I'm going to go 0.2 enter and then as far as the height looks like it's going to be about a half an inch if you look down in the bottom left hand corner down here it kind of shows you how far things are moving so a half an inch will be good I'm gonna select that rectangle and rotate it from the origin zero enter it looks like 45 degrees it's gonna move it over and up and there's a little additional feature on this snowflake. I'm going to go to our polyline tool, a left click, draw a line from this corner, holding down shift, or the smart track might take care of it to draw a nice straight line. Trim, click, click, 
Press enter, select your object to trim first, and then start trimming. Join those together. And I'm going to actually move this over a little bit, just like that. And if I need to make this a little longer, I can always kind of grab these and also kind of freestyle adjust the angle. I'm going to leave it just about right there. Need to mirror this on the other side. Type in the command mirror. And the start of the mirror plane is going to be at the midpoint of this top segment, holding down shift or using the smart track to keep us in line, nice and symmetrical right there. And then we're going to make a copy of this, selecting those two objects, copy tool right here, keyword copy, clicking at a point to copy from, holding down shift, and it's going to be about right about there. These four objects are going to get mirrored from the origin, basically 180 degrees on the other side, just like that. Going to trim Take care of that, join it, and then do an array polar command. Center of our polar axis or array is going to be at zero, and it's going to be a three item, 360 degrees, just like that. Going to do some trimming. Clean things up as you go. Okay, now we need to put kind of the star pattern in here. So to do this, I'm going to first draw the circle that's at the tip of the star. To do that, I'm going to draw a reference line from here to here and take the circle and put it at the midpoint. And that circle does have a diameter of point two nine going to take that circle and use the polar array command to copy it from the center six times enter and gonna delete that it's no longer necessary and then I'm gonna use the star tool the star tool is located underneath this polygon tool right here this polygon tool is used for like drawing triangle squares hexagons pentagons octagons and so on if you left click and hold on it you'll find the polygon star tool and the number of sides is going to be one two three four five six enter the center of our star is going to be at zero. And then this is going to be at the center of the circle. So we need to find the center of the circle by turning on our center snap and kind of hovering towards the edge and it should snap into place. I'm going to left click and I'm just going to bring it in. Just going to eyeball it something like that. And then I'm going to repeat that star command by right clicking center of star at zero, find the center again, and that's not actually going to work because this is going to cause some problems. So we need to do an alternate method for that. That is with the offset command, O-F-F-S-E-T, and we're going to offset this star a through point distance. So we could type in a specific distance, but we don't know that right now. So what we're going to do is type and click on through point and just use our mouse to kind of eyeball it. So we see a lot of extra geometry around the outside. It's okay, just basically go inside a little bit and it looks like I'm going in about 
And then now it's time to do some trimming. Trim. We want to, first I'm going to take care of the circles. Those are kind of the easiest things. Slow down when trimming, making sure you're clicking on what you want to have disappeared. Now I'm going to kind of work my way around here, clicking here, there, 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 there. And I'm going to get rid of these little inside segments. And we need to do some final trimming up here to connect our snowflake to the ornament shape, selecting everything trim, or everything that we need. We really don't need to select this outside. And then have those disappear, disappear. Control A, make sure everything is joined. We could select everything and type in hatch. And this is kind of a quick way to give us a shaded representation of the, what the ornament would look like out of sheet metal if you can't visualize it at the line mode. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to do a little inspection, dimension tool, diameter, checking to make sure we're at 4 inches, 3.7. Basically taking all the dimensions that are on my drawing sheet and verifying them in Rhino. New dimension to a linear dimension for this. Everything else has been a diameter. 0 0.83. Oh, there's one thing I did forget because I'm not fully looking at the drawing sheet right now. I am not done. we got to add the little branch part right here. So to do that, I'm going to draw a line from here to here and that's going to allow me to oops, there. But sometimes if you have too many of these O snaps on things get a little rowdy and out of control midpoint right about there right about there I'm going to go a little farther Something like that. Oops. I'm going to try that again. Line tool there. Right click and done. I'm going to take this line segment. One, two, three. Copy it. Keep everything nice and kind of parallel. And then make a copy of these segments by using the mirror command. that looks good I am going to turn on these node points to stretch it a little bit buttons right here underneath the group command and I can take these and kind of drag them drag them out F11 to turn them on keyboard shortcut F10 turns them on F11 turns them on and then I need the secondary side branch which is basically going to be something like that. Once again, since there's no dimensions on this feature, it's just based off of looks. It's not a critical tolerance. All snowflakes are different, so don't feel bad if yours doesn't look exactly like mine or the one on the drawing sheet. Okay. Let me mirror that again. I wasn't paying attention. There we go. Now I have... Ah! Slow down. Start a mirror plane. End a mirror plane. There we go. Equal distance to trim. Let me get rid of this. 
select this. There we go, trim. I'm gonna get rid of the geometry I don't need because I definitely don't want to have to trim all this after I use the polar array command. Selecting it, joining it, polar array. Centers at zero, number of items six. Trim. Enter when done, select everything and join. One join command broke history on one object. Interesting. I have no idea what that means. Let me just look at this. Everything looks good. Everything's joined. I'm just going to pretend that message never happened. I think we are good. Control S to save. Remember, always save before you start modeling. This is not the best practice, but typically I like to save whenever, but I did not save at the beginning. In my flash drive, on my desktop or wherever it is, I'm going to put my snowflake to snowflake ornament initials rhino6 file type save. That concludes drawing this snowflake ornament in Rhino 6. Thank you.